Hi everyone, VK3MEG, well, at the moment, VK3MEG at the moment, Kilo India 7 Zulu Radio Bravo as well. About to commence construction on a pretty big antenna, so I thought I'd go through some of the early stages of design and development. Using a YU7EF design, which my last two 6 meter antennas have been, this one's for 6 meters. But it's a big one. Seven elements, 8.9 metre long boom length. And how, how have I achieved this? Well, I'll just go through basically what I've been doing. In my old frosty four element that I had up a couple of days ago, this one actually works on 52 megahertz. I've taken all the measurements so everyone knows. And here's the boom. You notice I've got a few booms lying around, but this long section here, from here down to there, 6.5 metres long, runs about 2.4 metres long, so it'll be just the right length for the total boom length. Now, how am I going to join them? I've got, if you look up there, which the sun doesn't really help you too much, but you can see my big four element Yagi up there, that's a Ted Emtron, it was actually bigger. I've made it one element smaller. Now they use a pretty smart thing where they've got things that you insert in and you've got a hole that you drill into that sets it all up pretty nicely. So that's how I'm going to do it. And which will actually probably make the whole assembly process a lot easier. So I'll be able to get the first four elements I reckon to about here and the third one will come to here and then I can feed them from either side, then join the antenna together. I'm also going to have to look at using mast stays, which are basically ropes that will go and support the mast because the length is too long. Because if you have a look here, it's pretty floppy and flexible. It's a big antenna, but just to show you, actually, this is probably a good way to do it. So we're down the other end of the antenna, I'm going to try and lift up. This section so you can see so it's approximately in the middle but it still flops down a bit so I'll use the ropes to support the weight of the antenna as you see there it still flops down when it come off the bottom section because in actual fact that end section has got something stuck in it that's gonna be a little bit heavier but I want a strict budget got plenty of aluminium lying around those elements and more in the shed. I'm excited. This antenna will have about 12.4 dBi to make it approximately 10 dBd, which will make it a bit of a monster. Wish me luck. It'll be fed directly as per like this one, very similar. We fed the coax directly into there. It's a 50 ohm feed, this one was a 50 ohm feed, even though they weren't properly exactly lined up. Oh, I'm a... But this next one will be exactly lined up. My boom to mast, mounting plate I made it myself. Got a piece of 6mm aluminium. It's about 200 by about 150. I've actually got a longer one that I might use too, which will give it a wider support. So that's the section that mounts to the boom and then the two sections that mount to the mast. This is all bought at my local hardware store. These are the element insulators. So I get these from a company in Australia called Pertec. They're hydraulic suppliers. And uh, wherever, whichever country you're in, you should be able to get them. I see some people only using two for the driven elements, but I personally prefer four. Keeps it a lot more stable. And so you've got two pieces here, so you don't really get much movement at all. I've used aluminium checker plate for the for the mounting point. It's actually, if you have a look underneath, look it around, just have a look there. It's a little bit rough there. That's normally used as deck treading. But it's thin. I actually got it from the cutoff bin from the aluminium guys, probably about two or three millimetres thick. But um really good. It's uh, an interesting process. This is just the, a single element, 
today I might put the two on probably on this one later on but uh, for the time being it gives you an idea of how to build it this is a yu70f.com is his web page you got all the designs and the lengths as I said 8.9 meters long so this should be a bit of a monster I'm hoping that I can uh, actually do some DX with this looking to work international the beam width is about 40 degrees or 50 degrees but should still be adequate enough for me to spread it around I might build another one of those four element jobbies just to put on a lower tower but that has a really good beam speed of about 60 or 70 degrees so it means I can listen to see where the sporadic ease openings are but this is more for the long haul stuff because we're at the bottom of the cycle we're mainly using sporadic ease because the tet the transequatorial propagation is really non-existent so we use look for multi-hop ease which is uh, going to be interesting the tower's about 10 metres off the ground we're going to be running some uh, LDF 450 which I actually got from someone who, uh, who uh, I helped out move uh, some stuff and he said oh look I've got this sitting here do you want it we've got about 25-30 metres of it with end connectors so it should be exciting it's a, it's a really exciting project 6 metres is my main band that's why I'm doing the licence upgrade going through to extra uh, in the US calls because it's a bit easier for me because I'm just a truck driver and uh, it'll give me a full call in Australia in BK or Australia we can only as a standard operator which is similar to a general I can only operate 52 megs and above I have worked VG but all antennas are detuned up there it's really tough so when you really want to work the DX you've got to get the full call it comes down to a lower part of the band. So that's it. Some more of my antenna farms just while you're here. We've seen the Yagis. My 80 metre loop which runs all the way around the property. I've got my 2 metre, 270 metre Diamond X300. I've got a little uh, commercial Yagi there that covers pretty broad bandwidth. I've got my vertical for 10 metres which is one of my favourite bands. On the top of the tower you can see I've got the 2 metre Yagi as well. Um, hopefully we'll see it without some sun glare. I'll just, just see. Yep. Okay, now you can see it's a little bit off centre. We had some big winds here. But I'll be adjusting that around when I put the big antenna back up as well. So yeah, so that's the setup here at VK3 MEG. Or on my US general call, which is Kilo India 7 Zulu Radio Bravo. But I don't think I'll be keeping that call for very long. The Delta Loop, or the... Uh, the sky loop as they call it is fed with a 4 to 1 onion a 4 to 1 ballon straight into coax direct fed pretty good antenna on the roof of the shed you can see another vertical for 10 meters that's for when i'm in the shed uh, another vertical for 11 meters just check my openings and a couple of other for two meters and 70 centimeters and another two meter and 70 centimeter antenna so, as you can see see he must be obeyed Pretty good when it comes to my radio hobby, unlike some people. That would be great, but she figures if I'm playing radios, I'm not at chasing skirt or drinking, so where can the harm be in that? Anyway, I'll bid you all 73s today, and I hope you enjoy this video. Remember, if you can, hit subscribe. VK3, my Kiko Golf, with the commencement of the 6 meter beam. 73s.